now we're getting into the wrap up the show. You can see we're starting to get busier here as well, which is really exciting. Don't forget to put your questions in the chat. We can try and fit them in. And I've been joined for this section by our CTO, Eric Akudin. Hey, Eric. Great to Hello, see Matt. you. Hello, Matt. Exciting yeah. to be back at yeah, Barcelona, it is. isn't and, it? Uh, it's got, starting to get crowded. It is, it is. And I took a look at some of the questions and chat that we've had online already. Um, and I think we can try and do like a walk and talk through this space, if that's all right. And let's start off. We've got questions about how we move forward the network. Mm. You know, 5G advanced, the, the work that still needed to be done. Mm. We've only had the initial deployment, really. Mm. So where do we go with the rollout of new technologies? And let's see how we can move through this getting crowded space. We will get to that. We will get to 5G advanced. But I think it's good to start with what we've learned uh, just over the last couple of years, that networks become more important, mm. meaning having mid-band coverage everywhere, being able to service our customers with energy efficient solutions, and of course, high performance solutions. Mm. This is really about performance in the macro environment, the outdoor, but also in the indoor. The so indoor I think well. it's great to be able to show the, the new lineup of the indoor portfolio, yeah. which is really helping, not just smart manufacturing, but all, any enterprise, any indoor environment to get really good 5G coverage, mid band and the lower bands. And of course, indoor positioning is, is one of the things that really comes on top of that. Great mm. addition. But then also, when we look at the, the broader portfolio of energy efficient solutions, multi-band solutions, all of that really lowering the cost per gigabyte. And mm. I think that's super important for customers. And uh, of course, uh, energy efficiency being one of the key parameters also going forward. And we've heard that uh, earlier in the show, not just from the perspective of what we need to do to help with the climate crisis, but of course it's an economic decision nowadays. It's very well. much so now. Very much, yeah. Um, but that will also take us to uh, kind of the, the new flexibility and the new deployment scenarios. How can you deploy 5G networks in new environments? Mm -hmm. And that's really what we are showcasing when it comes to the evolution on the cloud run side, yeah. being able to run in new enterprise environments being able to, to cover deployments that weren't really possible to do before. That's a great addition, and of course we do it with partnerships like, like the one we're showcasing here with Intel. Absolutely, and then a more open ecosystem is developing mm. as well, which, um, which means lots more collaboration opportunities mm. for us all. Yeah. Um, and talking about this um, new opportunities to deploy new techniques and collaborations, automation is obviously a big topic going forward too. I, I would say it has been for quite some time. Automation of the operations, but it's everything about more efficient algorithms in the nodes, all the way up to the SMO and the R apps layer. And I think we see a lot of good progress on, on the automation, as you say. Uh, it has to be multi-vendor, uh, yep. sort of multiple RAN vendors, and you can still have one and the same automation platform. We're showing R apps here, what you can do both on the operational efficiency side, as well as new apps to help you monetize your network. And that could come into being able to offer dedicated performance when the service needs it. Mm -hmm. It could be in terms of specific positioning services. All of that comes with the flexibility, both of the automation platforms, as well as the open framework with R apps. So I think that's good progress in that area as well. Absolutely, and as we walk through now, we, we have our operations engine, some of our AI cloud portfolio as well. Um, you know, the full, the full sort of breadth of what is needed for an operator today comes together. And an event like this is great to see it all, and, and we can walk through it as well. So, yeah. um, but we start to think about not just the technological challenges ahead of us, uh, but also the business ones. Mm. Um, and we're going to walk into the monetized space in a section in a moment, but. I see something on the table here, and I just want to <laughs> discuss this with you, because earlier in the show, we saw this zero energy devices and, and a first glimpse of 6G. Yeah. What do things like this uh, mean to you? Yeah. No, I think you, you mentioned it. it. It's really about uh, kind of the, the long-term view. What does uh, technology enable us to do? We, we like to, to work with technology leaders. We want to work with partnerships. We want to work with our own, of course, research to be able to push the boundaries. And as you saw this before, is one example of where we're going to get billions, if not trillions, of sensors this uh, uh, woven into clothes. But I, I think that it just shows that when we look at the evolution, 5G, 5G advance into 6G, it needs to cater for new needs. Mm. And uh, energy harvesting or zero energy sensors is one part that we need to push the boundaries on, because obviously we cannot uh, have batteries, we cannot have charging as, as one of the showstoppers. We need to make it a part of the fabric. And this is true for sensors and devices, but it's also very true when it comes to making it part of the 
uh, the fabric of the, the network. So the yeah. network needs to be more pervasive, meaning that we can integrate it, as we've shown in, in walls, in, in, in anything that, that surrounds you, to be able to give that great user experience. So I think I, this I, is just one example of... The best pun I've heard so far in the show, without anyone laughing, I hope there were some online, the fabric of the network. I love it. Yeah, no, it's um, the fabric of the device as well. So um, we start to get an idea of the new things that 6G will bring, but yeah. uh, I think the biggest discussion we're definitely hearing at this event so far, and I'm expecting it all week, is about how we monetize on 5G. We've, we've started the deployments, we're getting there. Um, the question is, how can we get more out of um, the consumer share of pocket, even in difficult times? Uh, and we've been showing you know, what more of the attractive use cases that are coming along to build on that first generation of fixed wireless access, mm. right? Yeah, now, now you mention it, because I think that uh, we also realize that things take time in our industry, and fixed wireless have now come to a point where it's really millions of fixed mm. wireless users 4G, but also increasingly on 5G. And, oh. and of course, devices are coming along, CPs are coming along, the right price points allowing you to have a very competitive offering, gigabyte buckets, and of course, this is really a much more flexible, much more cost-efficient mm. way to deploy uh, broadband services to your homes, but also to the small and medium businesses, because as we've learned over the last two, three years, work from anywhere requires connectivity. It requires 5G mid-band everywhere, and then of course the fixed wireless access is the solution to that. And, uh, and those advanced markets, um, especially in Northeast Asia, we've seen uh, applications that are very popular with younger generations, like gaming, mm. uh, we're showing some gaming demos here, a couple of different varieties, entertainment, start to become, uh, you know, with new partnerships, profitable options, right? So the, what we are trying to bring together here is kind of the, the openness of the 5G network, the innovation platform, and that means that we work with partnerships, everything from startup in the 5G startup activities, mm. where gaming is a big part right now, but also advanced AR cases where 5G's capabilities really come to, to full use. But to your point also, many of the gaming experiences on 5G today with SA and network slices, they start to happen in the more advanced markets. And I think this is just one example of where you make best use of the network, but you also see that latency matches so well with the needs of the, the gaming community. Yeah. And then that carries over to differentiating network performance, ultimately leaving uh, networks with a better way to monetize performance, better exactly. way to monetize differentiation. So you have one set of, of capabilities delivered over a slice to an enterprise um, or a part of the enterprise services, another one delivering to maybe the factory floor. These capabilities are of course built in, but now you start to see that the applications make use of them. And this yeah. is really what we show here. And it's the, the start partnership. of the, um, the latency sensitive services. We start to see yes. them really. This is a great way to prepare us for something insane uh, from a, a tenfold perspective like XR, w XR which will come along in well. the future. And yeah, this will get us ready. No, it will, but I also think that it, it paves the way for what we now see as new and open networks, and therefore the work that we are doing together with operators on network APIs, mm -hmm. making sure that all these capabilities, uh, the bounded latency, yeah. the advanced slicing capabilities, the edge compute, but also security services, authentication services, positioning services that are today only available on a local market, they will become available to the global developer community. And that's where working together, Ericsson and Vonage, working together with operators, working together with a broader ecosystem, as you heard with the Zooms of the world and the black nut on the gaming side, that really makes so much sense for developers. And that's really what we, we are seeing. A lot of good examples for yeah. in this uh, Mobile World Congress. Yeah. Industry is coming together on that. I had a lovely conversation with Savine earlier on that as well. I but heard that. I think, I think we're going to take some live questions. So I'll just okay. see, what, see what we've got here. Just bear with me for a minute. Um, OK, oh, this one's a good one. We talked about automation. I've got a question here on machine learning uh, capabilities. I won't read the whole thing. Um, What's going to be different when we apply machine learning in terms of what we already experience today um, for CSPs? Yeah, so machine learning is already applied in uh, both in our, our operation side, but also in the product. So that means that we're using the operational data that 
course, uh, is already present in the network. We make it available on a granular level to machine learning algorithms. And that allows us to improve the performance, not just with the algorithms, but over time, learned behavior. And we are already seeing energy efficiency gains. We are already seeing efficiency in terms of reducing handover times. Mm. But if you go higher up the stack, this is much more about providing consistency in services. So for example, consistency in a network slice service, all the way up to the actual the catalog and the service orchestration, the monetization part. So machine learning comes in at all layers of the network stack, all the way from the very lowest handling of the transport of the bits, all the way up to the management system. And uh, of course, we are also seeing now with the advancement on the chat side when it yeah. comes to generative AI that it's becoming readily available, commercialized, and of course we are doing that kind of um, journey also on the network side with all the operations data, all the data about the nodes in the network. So I think it's a great uh, achievement so far, but there's much more to come in that space. I hope so. I can be replaced by a bot yeah, in we, a couple we of years. Yeah, we all can. We absolutely um, can. Especially for this role. And a couple more questions. Uh, let's talk about um, how, we, how we use the spectrum most efficiently. The great question here, um, in terms of energy, energy efficiency that we, we touched on at the start, C-band, mid-band, low-band, where can we be the most efficient? The, the question is, is it C-band? Be more efficient. Be more efficient from an energy well, perspective. Well, I think it, it really, yeah, the, the question is, is good in terms of what, what bands do we actually make use of? And the answer is all bands. So we mm. need the low bands, we need them for coverage, we need the mid bands, we need them for capacity. We also need the high bands for the super high capacity and typically the stadium cases. We have some great examples from recent sports events where fantastic uh, experience is delivered to customers, whether they are on smartphones, or on, on tablets or anything else through the high bands. So you need all bands, low, mid, and high bands. Well, and but when it comes to energy efficiency, it's really about delivering the, the many bits, the, the gigabytes over the, the most efficient medium. And, and mid band there helps us tremendously when it comes to lowering the, uh, the, um, the cost, lowering the, the energy consumption. So, so mid band is critically important to roll out to, to get that benefit. I think the concern in early days um, that I was picking up was if we go for those high bands, we need to turn up the power pokes quite a bit more to, to get more through. But clearly the advances in things uh, that's existing inside the products, especially the silicon and so forth, and that we have to do much less cooling than perhaps some people would have expected uh, in a lot of our new devices, right? No, I think uh, it, it comes down to energy efficiency as a combination of the Ericsson silicon, the hardware, and the advanced software, the deep sleep functionality, being able to exactly. not transmit when you, you're not uh, required to do so. But, but mid-band, I'm coming back to that. Yeah, the, the fantastic capabilities of the mid-band technology uh, with, with the right uh, energy efficient and, and optimized silicon, that is the way to go to, to lower your energy consumption, but then with software adaptively follow the traffic. That, that is really what we are Right, and a, a final question, uh, because I think it's going to fit really well to the whole experience, and we saw the 6G demos earlier, yep. and, and somebody's asked, because I believe some, there are some announcements coming out during the event, when are we going to first see 6G go live? So I think in, in an event like Barcelona, it's so good to see all the energy around 5G now, 5G monetization, 5G in enterprises, yeah. all the openness of the network. Next step in that journey is the 5G advance, where we start to see more capabilities in terms of time-sensitive networks, in terms of AI built into the system in a more profound way. And this is a journey. And then over time, we will see that the needs and the requirements from the industry at large enterprise and society will exceed what we can do with 5G and even 5G advanced. And that's really the time to go for 6G. And if you look at it more from an industry, research, standardization point of view, we're still looking at around 2030. And I think that's a good time frame to think about this because we, we see the advancement, you showed a few of them here, but you also see that it's uh, many steps not only on 5G and 5G advanced, but there are many steps before we can commercialize some of these super wideband technologies, these uh, energy harvesting sensors, all the full capabilities of AI. So, so think about yeah. it as a 2030 kind of a Absolutely, frame. and the discussion is clearly about 5G and what we can yeah, get out of absolutely. it. But I've really enjoyed seeing the research demos on the floor. Yeah. Um, I come from a fiber optics background, mm. so to actually see capacities through the air mm. that we've been doing through you know, yeah, you're thinking about the 100 gigabit it, uh, exam, it's, yeah. It's really outstanding. And, uh, you know, thanks to you and the team who've prepared all of this. Um, but it is a journey, and we've got a lot to do with 5G. So Absolutely. thank you for that. Good. And thanks okay. for joining me. We're, we're out of time for thank questions. You. So thank you, Eric. Thank you, Matt. Um, and thank you, everybody, for your questions. I've really enjoyed walking through and talking them through, and I hope you've enjoyed the show today. 
Um, if you'd like any more questions, please leave them in the chat. Someone will get back to you, and we'll do our best to answer it. So this is all for this year. I'd just like to say thank you for joining us. We've loved having you. Being here at Barcelona, as you can see, it's starting to get crowded again. That's a wonderful thing. And people have prioritized this event amid all the financial difficulties in the world, sustainability concerns. You see that it's still an important place to come and meet and make business happen and drive forward technology of our industry. So all, that says, all that's left for me to do is to say thank you very much, and I'll see you next time on Imagine Life.